Right. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, we're here today to um, for a workshop on installing a matrix uh, home server, a matrix server, uh, to claim uh, to start chatting freely and claim back control over your communication. Um, we are uh, so I'm Brendan Abolivier. Um, Here's Andrew Morgan. We're both a software developer working in the matrix.org backend team. Um, so we work on uh, most uh, backend and server side uh, projects on Matrix. Uh, if you want to find more about the project, here are our uh, social uh, networks. So what is Matrix? Let's give a, um, let's give a, a quick but concise introduction to what uh, we're talking about. Uh, Mate before we start, I'm gonna let you champion this presentation. I'm gonna just sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Th <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Right, okay. So, <laughs> right, so what is Matrix? Matrix is an open standard for interoper interoperable, decentralized, real-time communications over the internet. Let's break it down, break it down a bit. Uh, it, it's an open standard, which means that it's, uh, it follows an open specification. Uh, there's, a specific, there's a whole specification that you can find online on our website uh, that is uh, completely public, completely free to, to access and to use, uh, and everyone can make uh, proposals to that specification through a process that is also described on that website. It's interoperable. Interoperable, this word isn't really easy to say, um, uh, because it's a protocol for real-time communications that can interface with more siloed, uh, with other, other siloed or other free uh, communication platforms, such as like WhatsApp, Telegram. We're going to come back on that a bit later. Uh, it's decentralized, which means that everyone can um, host their own server. That's actually what we're going to do today. Uh, and on top of being decentralized, it's also federated, which means that everyone can host their own server and just talk to, with each other. Uh, and it's real-time communication, which means that there's um, there shouldn't be. Uh, it should be uh, like sending a message should be uh, instantaneous-ish. Uh, it provides, so more in depth, it pro uh, Matrix provides a standard HTTP API for publishing and subscribing to real time data in specified channels, which means it can be used to power many things uh, from IM to, uh, from instant messaging, sorry, to uh, VoIP and WebRTC signal uh, signaling, uh, to IoT communication, uh, and anything else really that can uh, be expressed as JSON and needs to be transmitted in real time over HTTP. Currently, we mandate, uh, our specification mandates that it's, the transport is JSON over HTTP, uh, HTTPS even, uh, but there's uh, discussions to broaden that, uh, that part. <coughs> uh, so let's come back on the kind of upper interoperable uh, side of Matrix. Uh, it has, uh, it's built with a distributed architecture, which means that you, uh, so you as a user, are going to use a client that will connect you to, to a server. Um, so the clients are right here, and you connect to a server, and every other client connecting to other server can still talk to each other over the federation, and we also have some other uh, components, uh, which are application services, uh, which can be used by for bots, bridges, uh, and stuff like that, and identity server, which we use to translate um, third-party identifiers, such as email addresses or phone numbers, into, uh, into matrix identifiers, so that you can, for example, chat to someone by just knowing their phone number or their email address. Um, be, uh, let's come back on the bridging side because one issue that Matrix is trying to solve is that the current world is really uh, fragmented. There's a lot of fragmentation of uh, instant messaging. Um, you have friends on Slack, 
friends on Telegram, uh, more nerdy friends on IRC, uh, and stuff like that. And every, like each, uh, each of those services is like its own bubble. Uh, you can't really get in or uh, you can't really get out of it to like from Slack to talk to, talk to someone on Telegram. And that's basically where Matrix comes in, um, because through what we what I've already mentioned, which is uh, app services and well, more specifically bridges, um, we you can uh, from one cl uh, one client well a home server can talk to m other home servers, but also to other services through bridges. So that means that from a matrix account. Uh, an account on a matrix server, you can talk to everyone on matrix, but also you can talk to people on Slack, you can talk to people on IRC, and so on. <clears throat> Another key part of matrix is that no single party owns your, owns your conversations. A conversation in matrix is shared over all of its participants. If you, if you have, if those three servers are in the same chat room and chat in just exchanging messages in the same chat room. There's not go there's not going to be one server owning all of the chat room and all of the data that comes through it, that goes through it. Uh, all the servers will share uh, the history of the room and will have the same power over that room. <clears throat> the matrix, uh, in terms of APIs, in a, of uh, so specifications, we have four major specifications, four major API. We have the client server API, which is uh, what we're going to talk about in a second. We have a server, a server to server API, um, which also we also call the federation API. That's what matrix servers use to talk with one another. We have the application service API uh, that, is, that is used by servers to talk to bridges and vice versa. And we have the identity ser uh, server API, which uh, is used by identity servers, which I uh, mentioned just before. So let's look uh, a bit closer at the client server API. It's just HTTP plus JSON, just like I said, which means that it's really easy to use, really easy to develop for. Uh, we could even use, um, we, could, we can even use just curl to perform any interaction with matrix. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, Andrew right here uh, did, uh, well made uh, a, few, a few weeks ago, uh, a small, um, like 10 lines uh, bash client for matrix, which just uses curl and JQ. Um, and we uh, just prompts you to send message to a matrix room. <clears throat> and uh, and it works and it works really well. Um, to send a, to send a message to a matrix room, just you uh, it's as simple as this curl request. Uh, so you send a post request with that content. That's going to be your JSON payload, uh, the content of the event. So for this for this example, we're going to send some. Uh, content of type, uh, with a message of type text uh, with the body hello. Uh, we're going to send it in a room identified by, by room ID, and we're going to give it a type, which is a message, which just means we're sending a message to the room. And the server, and once uh, given that, uh, once receiving that request, the server will process it and reply back with an event ID. It's usually a a bit, uh, a much, uh, uh, quite of a longer uh, string, uh, but it's, it's basically a random string, uh, ish. But we can't. You you can use uh, matrix to you to do much more than just send messages into a chat room. Uh, you can use it for, uh, for example, IoT control. Let's say controller hue light. Uh, let's send that random pay, uh, JSON payload. Uh, I want to control the light two of room one and set the brightness to uh, 0.5. Uh, and I'm going to s give it the type org.matrix.hue. That's not the type that exists in the matrix spec, but uh, the spec itself is generic enough so that you can define your own uh, message types. You can send a type, uh, a message of any type with any 
uh, kind of payload structure and it will send it to the room and, cli and clients on the receiving end can just process it and do the right thing. And again, it, we, we get a, an event ID back. Right, so now that we know what Matrix is about uh, and broadly how it works, let's install a home server. So first, what is a home server? In the matrix spec, we have three types of home servers. Uh, we've seen that a bit before with the uh, diagram, with the schema. Um, we have home servers that we're going to have a look at just in the next slide. We have identity servers that we've already mentioned, and we have application services. Uh, we have, uh, there's a couple more server types, but it's usually uh, either less client facing or um, or more happening in the background. Um, a home server is, can be described in that uh, by those three points. It's a server that implements the client, uh, the client server API. So a server, uh, it's a server that clients can talk to. Uh, it's a server that implements the whole federation API. So ser other servers can talk to. And it's basically, it can basically be summed up as the server that users are going to hit if they want to exchange data and receive data as well. Uh, so if I want to send a message, I'm going to send a request to a home server, and that home server is going to handle se serving the, that message to all of its other users and all the other servers you know, that are participating in a given room. We're going to, uh, what we're going to, to work with is uh, a project called Synapse. Uh, so it's developed by the Matrix.org Foundation, um, which we both work for. Uh, and, um, and it's cur the, currently the home, uh, the home server reference implementation. You can find it on GitHub uh, under the organization Matrix.org uh, and project name Synapse. Um, the goal of this workshop uh, are going to be to start with a fresh Ubuntu 18.04 server with Riot installed. Riot is um, one of the uh, most, uh, most widely used uh, matrix clients. It's a, it's a web client which will be directly installed on the server. And what we're going to do from that is to install Synapse, to configure Synapse, and then from all those, uh, and then once we, once all of us have our on home server, we're going to just be able to federate with each other because uh, we're going to provide you with um, uh, <coughs> with um, servers that are on the internet that can just talk to uh, each other and any home server that federates. In terms of resources, uh, we have provisioned a few, a few servers. I uh, have the domain names just here. Um, feel free to open, uh, your, uh, to, open a, a, to open your laptop, uh, well, a browser tab, to this URL. It will uh, direct you to a gist on, uh, on GitHub that will, uh, uh, that will uh, give, you, uh, give you all the instructions to follow. Uh, during the workshop, feel free to interrupt. Uh, well, I'm going to follow along the, the instructions to uh, just to show how to get along with it. Uh, but feel free to interrupt me if you have any any question. So um, I'm going to give away some papers with the info. Here's yours. Here's yours. Yeah. Sorry. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. There it is. Right. Yep. Your, is your server? It does. Is anyone else? Oh. There it is. All right. So, I also have one of those. Um, so those. So those server. So those papers contain. Uh, well have a domain name written on it. Uh, that's going to be the, uh, that's uh, a domain name that, uh, that will uh, connect, uh, that is uh, uh, associated with the, an IP address, uh, the IP address of 
an existing VPS with the setup that I've just described installed on it, installed on it and, um, and on which we will be able to just SSH in and do, the, and do all the necessary operations. Uh, has any, did everyone have the time to copy this address? Out if that's not the case. All right. So let me. Right. So you should. So here are the instructions for the workshops here on the screen. I'm going to. Yeah. Sorry. It's uh, quickly handwritten uh, addresses. If uh, if you have uh, any issue uh, reading those, uh, please just shout. So we have, I can zoom in a bit more. Yeah. All right, so here are the instructions. Uh, so here's the, uh, the page you're, you have the instructions on. Um, step one is SSHing into the server. So I just gave you, um, I just gave you uh, a, um, a domain name that, is, that looks like with a random string of five characters followed by ubukun.abolivia.dzh. Uh, that points to a, to a unique dedicated VPS, and you can SSH in with the user, with the user Ubuntu and the password ubukun2019. 20, uh, so I am going to do that as well. So that is L. L. That's an L. Sorry. <laughs> what? Right, so. It's not everything down to Ubicon, but LK maybe is not. Uh, sorry, that's an N. Letter yeah. N. That's N, letter N. Uh, Nid. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Any yeah, please, please shout if you're uh, if you can't like resolve your uh, the domain name you've been given. Um, my handwriting isn't the most perfect one. So, oh yeah, I, I haven't uh, I forgot to mention uh, the Wi-Fi is uh, you you have a, a Wi-Fi accessible uh, under the ISSID hash ubukun eu19, which is up. I'm actually using it. Uh, yeah, if you want. Correctly connected. Yep. Cool. So she's blindly cutting and pasting instructions. So? So she's blindly cutting and pasting instructions. Probably. I'm going to. So I'm going to go through and explaining uh, what we what we do, um, okay. which the uh, which the document doesn't necessarily do. Uh, so. You become 2019. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Yes. I was going to. I was going to explain that later. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't go too fast. Um, you can just pass the. You can just put the domain name of your uh, of your server. Ah. Your dead domain is. I'm just using free and open source software. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, ah. Yeah. It thinks. Yeah. Yeah. 
I want to SSH. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it is working. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's not going to work. Right, okay, cool. Uh, is everyone uh, connected to the server? I think so. Okay. So, Want me to want me to, to, to come over to proofread it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, so that is M M Y K Z Q. Okay. Yeah, at Ubicon. Dot Ubicon. Okay. Uh, it's Ubicon. Ubicon. Sorry, again. Uh, Ubicon, not Ubuntu. Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, you become. Uh, yeah. Uh, M at mykzq. Dot yeah. Bolivia. Yeah. That Bolivia. Yeah, that is written correctly. Yeah, that should work. Uh, Make sure that. Uh, yeah. Okay, my name is Pierre. So. Ah, because I'm uh. using port. Oh, right. Uh, you should connect. You should connect to port uh, twenty-two. So add. Uh, so add uh, uh, dash, dash capital P uh, twenty-two. No, it's lowercase. Oh, it's lowercase. P. Oh, I'm, and I'm giving you this <laughs> back <laughs> because you'll need it later. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right. Does anyone have more issues uh, connecting to the server? Cool. Right, so uh, the first step in installing a matrix, uh, uh, well, uh, to installing Synapse is to install the matrix.org repository. Uh, there are, uh, on Debian, I think, uh, there are uh, some uh, uh, packages on the main, repo on the default repository, uh, but we provide our own that we, uh, just for the sake of keeping it uh, up to date. So we're first going to, uh, to add that uh, SSH key, uh, so, sorry, that GPG key. Yep, so it's okay. I'm going to now add the repo. It's going to update the list of packages. Uh, I'm sorry, we need to let that finish correctly. Password, password is uh, is Ubicon 2019. It's probably going to wait a bit if uh, see if uh, everyone's having issue. Anyone's having issue? Works fine? Yeah. Okay. Waiting for the step three. Sorry? Waiting for the step three. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, right. Uh, are you also following me? Okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. So uh, now that we've installed the, the repository, we're going to install um, to install Synapse uh, itself. So we're going to install the Matrix Synapse package, and we're going to also install the SQLite 3 package. Uh, SQLite 3 is going is what we're going to use as Synapse's database backend for this workshop. 
but just uh, just noted that uh, in production in production environments we really advise uh, against using SQLite, but instead using PostgreSQL, uh, which is our most supported uh, uh, database backend and also the best for performances if you're joining large federated rooms and stuff like that. Right, so it asks us, for, uh, so now it asks for the name of the server. Uh, and for that, we'll just, we'll just need to use the domain name that we've been, uh, that you've been given. Uh, in my case, it's emi.ubucon.com. So, oh uh, yeah, I have a extra n. Ah, that's piece of age. It also asks you if you want to report an email statistic uh, on the production environment. You can reply yes if you want, no if you want, no if you don't. For this workshop, the stats we're going to get don't really care, uh, and so we're going to say no. And the stats that we that that we retrieve are mainly about. Um, numbers of users, the platform as well, platform information on like version of the, tab of the database backend and versions of Python, uh, because Synapse is a Python project, and, uh, and version of Python so that we as the backend team can know better how to, uh, like how, where to take that, uh, where to take the projects if we see that we have only, that there's amazing features in a certain version of Python, but most of our user base is still in lower versions. We're not going to deprecate it and stuff like that. So that's the uh, for transparency, the data we, the kind of data we we get uh, via the report statistic uh, feature, uh, just for and how we process it. The, uh, that uh, yeah, that machine is a Ubuntu 18.04, the latest LTS, if I'm not mistaken. Right, so it's uh, right. So now I have installed the matrix, the matrix package. Um, right, so that's just some notes. Um, if you want later to um, to install Synapse but don't want to use Debian packages, we have a few uh, installation methods uh, listed here. Now we're going to, con to configure Synapse. Uh, Synapse configuration, if you install it via the package, uh, Debian package is located here in etc slash matrix dash synapse uh, slash home server dot yaml. Uh, so you edit it as root uh, and you get a quite long, um, quite long uh, co uh, yaml file. So we're only go we're going to change a few values in there. Uh, so first, uh, you need to, we need to uh, go into the listeners section, which is right here, around line 100, uh, 180. And we're going to uncomment that section. So basically, uh, to uncomment that, um, that part. Uh, what it does is, so this section, listeners, is going to define how Synapse listens uh, for new HTTP queries. Um, we, uh, currently, there's only one, uh, by default with that package, there's only one uh, listener registered, which is, um, which is a local one, local host, on uh, port 8008, uh, which doesn't have TLS, so the expected setup is that you'll have some uh, web server that will just reverse proxy it uh, in, fr in the front, um, but we're not going to we're not going to do that. It's it's uh, fairly trivial, but let's go let's go let's just uh, let's just go with um, having Synapse serve HTTPS. Ah, and my Vim is acting up. Um, right, so let's uncomment that part. <coughs> Uh, to add a new uh, listener on 
8448 with TLS on that will serve the client API and the federation API. Um, 8448 is the default port in the matrix in the matrix specification for the for, feder for federation traffic. So there's some configuration going on uh, if you if you want to change that. Um, right. So now that we've done that. <coughs> Uh, we're going to go into those lines. Um, actually, no. Uh, it's more. It makes more sense if we first do that. We're going to need to register a user later, so we can't do that if we don't have uh, registration enabled. By default, mat uh, matrix home servers come with registration disabled uh, because it uh, because enabling registration must be like a something like an explicit uh, act from you. But it's worth noting that there is a register script, so you can register. Exactly. So, so, yeah, the, so what Andrew just said is that there is a, a, an admin script that registers a user. So the, the basic use case of, uh, of Synapse setups is I just want uh, a private home server uh, that May, that still federates, but doesn't um, doesn't really um, allow, allow. Yeah, exactly. Allow any random person to register. Uh, to pre that's to prevent spam and uh, and stuff like that. <coughs> um, so we're going to change that for the for the sake of this workshop. And in if you just want a private server with no registration, you can just use the script, it's, uh, we're going to have a, a look later um, that's, uh, that allows a, a user to, uh, to register, uh, an admin, sorry, to register a new user on the server. So we're going to increment that line, uh, which I just did, uh, and we're going to change that value to true. Okay, so now let's go back here um, and take a quick break to, to get some uh, notions. Currently, to federate, a matrix home server needs uh, to expose a valid SSL certificate on its, um, on its federation, well, at least on its federation endpoint, endpoints. Um, this, uh, that, that wasn't true. If, if you've been trying to install a home server a few months ago, it might have not been true. Uh, that's something we changed when we released uh, Matrix 1.0 uh, back in June. Uh, and it's just to avoid, uh, p to avoid people, well, to try to prevent uh, impersonation uh, and, and uh, misuse of identity and stuff like that. Um, Yeah, so I, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm just going to repeat um, what we were doing before enforcing valid certificates is we were, we were looking at a project called Perspective uh, and the, the point of this project is instead of trusting, uh, instead of trusting a, um, a, C, a certificate authority to provide, to provide valid, or at least validate a certificate, we would just use the federation to ask, do you trust the do you trust that this certificate uh, matches the identity it claims? Uh, and we and with like if if we had a certain percentage of servers that said yes, we would also trust that certificate. Uh, that uh, that was in a time where. Um, well, Let's Encrypt wasn't around, so a, set, a, a valid SSL certificate was really expensive, um, especially for individuals. Uh, and um, <coughs> and, uh, and wasn't necessarily easy to get. Uh, but now, but we had a few issues with that. Uh, one being we never completely implemented that project. Uh, it also uh, kind of died uh, in the meantime. 
and Let's Encrypt uh, came around back in 2016, 2015, I think, something like that. And since then, everyone is now able to have, to get their own uh, SSL certificates. So what's the repeating Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, the, uh, if I'm, it, when I'm repeating stuff for uh, that Andrew says, it's uh, because I have a, a mic for the recording. Um, so uh, let's f go find those two um, parameters. So that are going to be the path uh, of, our set, our, of our TLS certificates. We're not going to, uh, well, there's no certificate right now on disk. We're going to see uh, that right after. So we have two lines here. Uh, it's around line 330 in the configuration file. Uh, and we have TLS certificate path and TLS private key path. We're going to uncomment both of those. Um, for nicety, uh, in a way, we could also replace server name by um, the domain name, uh, which might make it easier if you if you want to if you want to manage m several certificates. We're not going to care about that right now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, because it doesn't change anything. And so now that we have, that, now that we're, that we're giving Synapse a path to get certificates, well, we need those certificates. And we're going to use a very handy feature of Synapse, which is built-in ACME support. So if you don't know, ACME is the protocol that Let's Encrypt uses, and probably others in the future, uh, to um, to generate and deliver certificates, uh, so you can it's a protocol that any server can use to um, request certificates, and Synapse has a, has a vast support built in. So we can just search for Acme, uh, which is around line 300, uh, 400, sorry, uh, which is which has uh, all those nice settings. And so we're going to first want to enable it, uh, to enable it uh, by setting enable to true. Um, <clears throat> right. Then uh, we're going to look at the domain that is specified for uh, Acme. That's the domain that Synapse is going to request a certificate for. And we're going to want to comment that line out because um, if that setting isn't provided, as uh, said by this um, by this uh, by this documentation line, if it's if that uh, setting is not set, uh, it will fall back to the server's name, uh, which we entered during the installation step. So, uh, and in this case, it's the publicly accessible domain name, so it's exactly what we want. Right. So, last step. Uh, Acme requires you to right, requires to be accessible on port, or requires a server listening on port 80. Thing is, with that specific se with that specific setup that we're using, we have we, are, we already have a se uh, web server listening on it, which is the web server that serves Riot, the web app I was talking about. Uh, so we can't give Synapse uh, access to port 80. Instead. What already what is already existing on the um, on the server uh, on the servers that we're using is a proxy rules that a proxy rule that reverse proxies every um, every request uh, that it receives on uh, on the right route for uh, the Acme protocol to port eighty eight eighty eight. So we're just going to change that. Uh, into port 8888, so that the web server can talk to Synapse in the right uh, uh, in the right manner. So now we've done all our all of our configuration. We're going to save that file, close it, and we're going to uh, restart Synapse. I I'm said restart because uh, installing Synapse already started the already started it in the in the background. So we're going to restart it to apply the new configuration. So system control, restart. There it is, okay. Uh, restart matrix dash synapse. That's how the systemd uh, service is called. We're going to let it run.
can take a bit of time um, to start. And so what we also can do is uh, follow the startup process uh, by running, uh, by looking at the logs with uh, journal control, uh, in my case in a different terminal, but you can also do it uh, after it's done. Uh, Currently starting this, uh, starting the uh, starting synapse. Um, there's some um, some issue. Say what? Uh, sometimes uh, twisted can so synapse uses a framework that's called uh, twisted to manage uh, asynchrony, uh, asynchronity um, and uh, it can sometimes take a bit uh, a bit of a time to to start up. Right, it's fail to start, ah, uh, no, it already, uh, so we see that uh, system D already uh, automatically tries to start, um, to, re to start it. Come on. It's starting. Got it. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so no, that's um, so that's the because of the default config. It, it's mm -hmm. just a warning. It's not an error. It's it's still no, going. No, no, okay. It's still going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a, a, a warning because in the in the config uh, in the config file. So suppose you have to start in it. It's looping. Yeah. Right. So it's it. So here it's start. It's starting. It's setting up the HTTP uh, listener. Mm -hmm. It's provisioning the certificate, and then it's starting the, the HTTPS uh, mm -hmm. listener, and that's just a warning that says that it has it's provided with two interfaces, but it can only listen on one. Yeah. Everything fine? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, I have no. I have no idea why. Uh, I you need to try to restart it manually. Right, okay. Hmm? Yeah, let's let's blame system D again. <laughs> no, I uh, I've been having a few a few issues myself uh, where it can take some time to to, to restart. Uh, just have to wait really. Whew. It started. Finally. Right, so all right, so we have so we're going to have uh, to to see a few um, a few interesting lines here, uh, right? Okay, so I'm going to zoom out of this a bit. Okay, so uh, we can we can see a few interesting thi uh, interesting thing uh, things here. Um, so it's starting. So the server here, the server is starting. Um, it is. That's just some uh, basic information. Uh, you can see some uh, warnings like this, uh, fail to listen on 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. Uh, 
uh, it's because if you look at the configuration for the listeners, uh, which isn't provided here, uh, which is, ah, which, uh, it is because, um, it's because the bind addresses are going to be, uh, no, okay, um, so the, the default, so the, the the default bind address for a new listener is going to be um, it's it's going to be uh, uh, it's going to be this uh, and what it's going to what it's trying to do is basically st uh, it's listening on this one and then trying to also listen and then saying telling you I'm successfully managed to listen on this one for this listener. So I'm just going to ignore this line. To, I'm just not going to listen on it. Uh, all right, so what we also can see here is that uh, it, has, it, has, uh, you, it has gone through the ACME, uh, the ACME support, so that's the ACME handlers in the code and provisioned, uh, provisioned uh, a TLS certificate for limai.yubuka.bolivia.bzh, uh, which is my uh, domain name. Managed to do that, and then started, um, and then started a listener. Uh, I believe that this uh, is the specific listener that it uses to, do, to perform the ACME protocol starting. And this is uh, the listener, the HTTPS listener that we've just configured. Right now, my uh, my home, now my ham server is started. It started. It's conf it's configured. It's able to. It's normally able to federate. So if I go uh, and so I can check that it federates by going to HTTPS as, uh, that it works fine. Sorry, HTTPS my domain name on and port 8448. So that, again, is the port that we've configured for the HTTPS listener, and that is also the port, uh, the default port for federation. And if we go to that address, it works. Synapse is running. Uh, so <laughs> it's, it's running and it's uh, serving my uh, Let's Encrypt certificate. Right, so now wh uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to go to that domain uh, as I as I told you before, um, come on. Uh, as I told you before, uh, there's a, web a matrix web client uh, connected to, well, installed on those servers, which is called Riot. Uh, it looks like this. And since we've enabled registration, we can create an account. So I'm just going to name it Brendan. Give it some simple passwords and tell me that, it's, that there is a nice strong password, and I'm going to register. Um, I, didn't ha I didn't have a, I haven't added a, an, a, um, an identity server nor an email address, so it tell, it, it's telling me that it's going to be hard to reset my password. Um, that's something uh, I don't really care, but I can, um, if I want, uh, no, not here. Uh, but if I want later, I can uh, fix that. Um, the main reason it does that is um, is because uh, you need an email to reset your password if, if you're forgetting it. In this case, with the server admin, so we don't really care because we can just reset the passwords uh, via the command line. And we're going to just hit continue. No, um, because we're the server admin, we can just go onto SSH onto the server and just change the password. We don't have to go through Synapse sending us an email to reset the password, which normal users can uh, can do. Oh right, oh, sorry. Yeah. So the you've so we've cre we've just created a user. Uh, so if you if I go to yeah. Yeah, be, yeah. Because because during the configuration we've enabled registration with Riot, uh, we can. Uh, why did I do that? Um, with Riot, we can uh, we can just create accounts 
and just register a user. Uh, all right. Uh, currently, so I so I am going to repeat the question: Is it possible to on that newly created matrix server to log in with an existing matrix account? That is not yet possible, but that's something we're working on. Um, we're working on matrix uh, making matrix accounts independent from uh, servers. So now we're going to uh, try to federate with each other. And we're going to, uh, and for that, we're going to just uh, to join a new room. I've actually created a room for this workshop. I can see by my notification counter here that some people have already joined it. <laughs> uh, and so that room is, so we're going to use a room alias for that. An alias is, uh, so a room has, uh, in, in, the, in matrix, in matrix land, uh, a room has two types of identifiers. Uh, it has an ID which is a random string that identifies that room uniquely in the federation. Um, and, you ha and a room can also have aliases uh, that are addresses for the room. You can compare that to kind of DNS in that I can, uh, if I start a server, I'm going to have an IP for this server and I can add as many uh, DNS records, so domain and subdomains for this um, for this IP address uh, to be able to, to reach it easily. So I'm going. So the room the room we've create, uh, I've already created is hash ubicon 2019 colon abolivia.bzh. So that's a room on my personal home server. And I'm just going to on Riot to click explore. And in find a room, past that alias and hit enter, enter to join. And now what's happening is that my, it's, that my, the home server I've just created is talking with, that my, uh, with uh, my personal home server, which is another home server, uh, to make it join the room. The room is public, the room has an alias, uh, so it can do that. And look, I've already joined, I've joined the room, some other people have joined the room, and so here's the room from my uh, personal, um, from my personal accounts, and I can send a, mes a message from here, and it's just going to appear here. And so those, and so my two users, and so those two users are on completely different servers. So I'm on a home server called Abolivia.bzh. Uh, that's Andrew on his on his own server on his on home server on amorgan.xyz. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> that's a gentleman run here uh, on another server, which is also under abolivia.bzh, but because but it's a complete, it's a different domain, so it's an independent uh, server. And so and yeah, and uh, and as we can see here, uh, Riot has some nice features such as um, such as uh, Markdown and. Upload medias and stuff like that. So, right. So we've now successfully uh, created our home, well, installed our, our own home server, um, and that's it. And we're just in a, and all of those home servers. So every every user on this in this room, I'm probably going to show it here. Every server in this room are. Um, on a, on a different server. So if I if I go back to if I go back to this slide, it's a, it's exactly the it's exactly what we, what we are talking about. Like for example, I'm on this server. Uh, Brett right here is on this server. Uh, Andrew right here is on this server, and like we can add as many. Um, as many uh, dark blue nodes as we want, and all those server, all the servers, like all those servers with all of these users, as long as they're in the same room, they can just chat with, uh, they can just uh, chat with each other and uh, exchange messages over the federation. And yeah, and that concludes the.
workshop. And, uh, and so if you have uh, any question, I'll be <laughs> happy. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Right, so if... Yeah. No, no, it's fine. Uh, I actually didn't unplug anything, which is miraculous. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, uh, so... If you want to... so. Right, uh, that's a good point. We've just tried uh, we've just tried uh, Matrix on like on Riot, which is uh, the ma uh, the most widely used client. But uh, if I <coughs> let me show it, let me show that if I have enough connectivity. But there are a lot of, a lot more Matrix servers. Uh, if I go into discovers clients. Uh, and so currently, the, and so there's a lot of existing um, matrix clients because uh, that's because well the matrix pack is as I said open everyone can use it everyone can implement it uh, so you can just and and so with the server with the server that we've uh, that we've created anyone can just install a new client and use the and use the account that we've just that we just um, Created with that, and so with the the server that we that they prefer. Yeah, there's a lot of different clients, not just this. Like yeah. yeah, there's a there's a whole page about it. Uh, don't. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, good point. We have uh, there is a, a couple uh, Ubuntu Touch uh, clients. Uh, so we have Umatrix and Fluffy Chats, with, uh, uh, which are developed, uh, which are developed for Ubuntu Touch, and have uh, even uh, for Fluffy Chats uh, a matrix room. So, like for example, let's let's do this as well. Uh, that's a matrix open, so it might take a bit more time. I could, um, right, if I want to to join like a non-test room, I'm just going to join Fluffy Chat on matrix on matrix.org. Might take a bit of time because I think it's a bigger room, and oh, even, not even that. And and so right, and so here we have all the uh, fluffy chat community chatting over, and uh, and I can just send a message to that public room, and we can just chat uh, chat around. Oh, and uh, I can see. So we also have uh, we also have bots and and, uh, and stuff like that, which is again thanks to the open spec and the fact that, and partly also because of it's HTTPS plus JSON, so it's literally everywhere. So it's one of the easiest things to to automate. Does anyone have more have more question? About matrix, about the workshop, about anything. Yeah, yeah. I'm here, so I'm coming to the right. line. So uh, I have to comment the time. Uh, no, no, uh, no. You don't. Have, you don't have to uh, care about okay. those. You just need to implement those. Okay. So what we do here is. By default, uh, well, uh, with the default config, uh, Synapse only has one non-TLS listener, okay. and what we want is for it to publicly listen uh, on an on a TL, on a HTTPS mm -hmm. uh, on HTTPS endpoints. Yeah. Okay. So, so, um, so yeah, my fault. Uh, no. Nice. Yeah, because. Yeah, I have to. Solve it. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you have to edit the file. Yeah. No worries. Right. So, right. Uh, 
Uh, nice. <laughs> cool. Right, well, uh, if there is no uh, further question, um, given that we've uh, finished the, the workshop uh, with quite, quite a, a bit of time left, uh, we'll stick around to, uh, we'll stick around to help the, well, to chat a bit and help the people who, who came a bit later and are still doing it, uh, and are still, still following the steps. Uh, but uh, otherwise, thank you for your attention, and uh, and uh, feel free to uh, feel free to to hit us up. Inconveniently, I put the I put our contact detail uh, at the beginning. To that, so if you want to get in touch with us, here are our email addresses. Here are our matrix uh, user IDs. So just have a chat with us if you have any question. And otherwise, uh, have a good rest of the day and a good end of Ebook and Europe. <laughs>